The Unloved Wife. Genesis chapter 29 verse 31 to chapter 30 verse 21, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 15 to 18, and Romans chapter 11 verses 25 to 36. Introduction. Have you ever felt unloved, unworthy, and not enough? Last Parasha. Adonai Yod Hey Vav Hey told Jacob that he will be with him, and keep him wherever he goes. He made it easy for Jacob to reach Haran through the shepherds that he met, who knew his uncle Laban. He also met his cousin Rachel, and finally he met Laban. Upon his stay there, he wanted Rachel to be his wife, so he served seven years for her. But Laban gave Leah first as it was the custom of their place, that the older daughter must get married first before the younger. As a result, Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah. Our parasha gave entry to the condition of Leah as the unloved wife and how Adonai yod hey vav hey favored her. Leah as being unloved does not mean she was abused by Jacob. Maybe his attention was more of Rachel. Since Adonai yod hey vav hey is an omnipresent God, he saw Leah's condition. Because of this, Adonai favored her. How? Her womb was opened. Verse 31. Despite being married to Jacob who never liked and loved her, Adonai lovingly favored her by giving her four sons. Going back to the case of Sarah, she was childless, Genesis chapter 16 verse 1, and had passed the age of childbearing Genesis chapter 18 verse 11. Also Rebecca who also experienced being barren, Genesis chapter 25 verse 21, but because of Isaac's plea to Adonai, Rebecca bore him twins. Barrenness was the greatest challenge that the matriarchs faced. Even Rachel, that's why she envied her sister Leah. Notice the name that she gave with her sons. First, Reuben means, notice, because Adonai noticed her affliction. Second, Simeon means, hears, because Adonai heard that she was unloved by Jacob. Third, Levi means, attached, for she wants her husband to be attached to her. Fourth, Judah means, praise, because she praised Adonai. Adonai listened to her, verse 17. After having four sons, Leah had stopped bearing. This time, she took her maid Zilpah and gave it to Jacob as wife. The maid bore two sons Gad and Asher, and she was happy. Now the competition was obvious between Leah and Rachel. They were racing to have as many sons as they could, and aside from using their maids, they wanted mandrakes, a plant from the Mediterranean with blue flowers during winter, and turns yellow in summer and believed by many as a plant for fertility. There was a trade as well, Rachel wanted the madrakes by giving Jacob to Leah for one night. As a result, Adonai yod hey vav hey listened to Leah and she bore Jacob a fifth son. He blessed Leah, who didn't eat mandrakes but gave it away. The lesson is very obvious, magic is worthless compared to the power of Adonai yod hey vav hey over pregnancy. Earlier, it was a struggle between brothers like Isaac and Ishmael, Esau and Jacob, but this time, it's between sisters. But the good thing is, these two matriarchs had an important role in fulfilling the promise of Adonai yod hey vav hey to the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He used Leah and Rachel to give twelve sons to Jacob, and soon these twelve sons will become the twelve tribes of Israel and one of these tribes, the promised seed, Yeshua, will come. Ruth chapter 4 verse 11 to 12, all the people who were in the court, and the elders, said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, both of whom built the house of Israel and may you achieve wealth in Ephrathah and become famous in Bethlehem. Moreover, may your house be like the house of Perez whom Tamar bore to Judah, through the offspring which the Lord will give you by this young woman. Leah and Rachel have both struggled. Leah was unloved, and Rachel was barren and yet, Adonai yod hey vav hey is there to listen and remember them. Our Haftar portion deals with the future condition of Israel as a nation of Adonai yod hey vav hey. Although they have been forsaken and hated, they will be exalted forever. They will be nourished by the riches of the nations, and Yeshua will be recognized as the Lord and Savior, the Mighty One of Jacob.
Gold, silver, iron, and stones will not only add a beauty for Zion, but a stability as well, and there will be shalom, salvation, and praise in the land of Israel. In apostolic portion, Apostle Paul focused on two M's. First, the mystery and it's about the blindness that happened to Israel. Although Adonai chose them as his people, Israel was blinded because of adultery and idolatry. In Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 6, it says, The Lord said also to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there played the harlot. Even in Egypt when they witnessed the ten plagues of Adonai, and yet they were still a stiff-necked people. In Romans chapter 10 verses 1 to 3, Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they may have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. But because of the blindness of Israel, Adonai Yod He Vav He's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles as well. Acts chapter 28 verse 28. The second M is the mercy of Adonai. In Romans chapter 9 verse 24, Apostle Paul said, Even as whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And in verse 25, Paul used Hosea chapter 2 verse 23, I will sow her for myself in the land. I will also have compassion on her who had not obtained compassion, and I will say to those who were not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. We can see here that Adonai Yod He Vav He have compassion with the Gentiles and he included them to be part of the commonwealth of Israel, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 to 13. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. The connection of our parasha is about the mercy of Adonai yod He vav He. In Torah, even though Leah was unloved, Adonai opened her womb, gave her four sons. Later he listened to her and gave her another two sons because of his mercy. In Haftarah, the condition of Israel as chosen people of Adonai will be switched from being forsaken and hated by nations to being forever exalted because of his mercy. In apostolic, Adonai has committed the Jew and Gentile to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. Back to my introduction. Even if we felt unloved, unworthy, and not enough, Adonai yod He vav He is always there to show his love and mercy to us. He can see our afflictions. One day, he will look and remember us like what he did to Leah and Rachel. Yeshua was also unloved and rejected among men, but he overcame it and so we are. Shabbat Shalom.